Hey friends, welcome back to the AWS SysOps Administrator exam prep course here at CBT Nuggets. In this first video, we're gonna take a look at the AWS certification ecosystem. Quite a few options, just like the rest of AWS, <laughs> and their exams and certifications give us many different choices to choose from across foundational, associate, professional, and specialty level certifications. So to kick it off, we'll go ahead and head on over to Google and take a look for AWS certification. Let's see if I can bring that up here. Great, and we'll just take a quick look for AWS certifications and cruise on down past some ads there. Great. Okay. There we go. Prepare for AWS certifications. Oh, I think I'm on the wrong page. Let's go back up here. Overview. Great. Scrolls on down here a little bit farther and we can get to this tasty chart where they have all of the exams laid out. And sure enough, you can see that they've got it broken down following a lot of the traditional models where you have a foundational concept uh, level, you have an associate tier, a professional tier, and then you've got your niche specialty certifications. And so for me, my large focus after years of AWS training is to try to figure out how to effectively spend my time making training content that covers three different exams that really frankly talk a lot about the same things. And so, Starting right off, the solutions architect, this would really be the exam that's all about helping design and implement solutions, um, really taking requirements from stakeholders within your organization, with other business partners, or with other consumers of AWS cloud services, and helping dial in the solution to meet their requirements. Remembering that as a part of solutions architecting, you're thinking about value, you're thinking about cost, you're thinking about effort to implement, effort to support all very important principles. And heads up, those principles are gonna make you a better sysops administrator as well. So as I move into the sysops administrator world, I'm thinking I really want my learners to know a little bit about architecting because best practices therein are gonna help you drive the right types of solutions and become more valuable to your team members. This is the holistic way of teaching and the mechanisms that I try to use to convey this information. So the sysops administrator role then, this is our doing and supporting and implementing and maintaining type of role. For all intents and purposes, it's the closest type of role to traditional uh, network operations or systems operations role in traditional data center positions. You're talking about working help queues, you're talking about managing and monitoring and maintaining the life cycles of various systems within your environment. A lot of focus on cost optimization, durability, and recoverability. These are more traditional types of roles. And so contrasted against solutions architect, where we're thinking best practices, how to design, how to improve, and how to optimize, and how to gather the right information, sysops is something that would generally come afterwards and before and on the long end after things have been built. They are the ones that are going to either be deploying or managing or supporting the infrastructure once it's actually been up and running. So in a lot of ways, this is the closest to your traditional roles that you might be thinking of, which jumps us over then to the developer. And with the AWS developer certification, it's all about integration. Because as much as we write code and deploy tools and software within AWS, a large part of it, especially as you get into the serverless world, is about stitching together with ease the types of interfaces and components and services that AWS is making available to us. Remember, when we say serverless, we don't mean that there's no servers out there. There's obviously CPU and RAM and storage out there that's being used. But as a developer, I don't have to consider largely the impacts of a lot of those elements. I can think about how to use a service for its specific use case to meet a specific objective for an application, for a customer, for a problem solving scenario. And so again, when I say that there are three different exams here, but only one body of information, this is exactly what I mean. To be an effective developer, sysops administrator, or solutions architect, you need to not only have a good understanding of what the services do, what their value proposition is, really the intrinsic value behind each one of the products and services, because that's what AWS thought about when they designed them. You also have to have an ability to do some integration and understand the problems behind integration. And so in the end, friends, as you begin taking my associate level courses here within the CBT Nuggets catalog, you're going to find a lot of overlap in the information inside of it. And that is absolutely by design. It's because I am concerned that you get a holistic uh, view of what the cloud computing space looks like. Roles might be job titles, but I guarantee you, if you think back or if you've ever had a job before, there are extra things that get picked up. And just by being adjacent to other divisions and organizations and job roles, you start taking on and experiencing some of those uh, interactions as well. Which brings me down to DevOps. DevOps is all about breaking down these borders. 
So we don't want to think just like developers or only like architects or only sit there and open and close our tickets in the sysops world. Instead, we want to pull from all of those different areas. And that is exactly what I've tried to do when I created the training here at CBT Nuggets. So imagine you're talking about a service like um, S3, okay? The simple storage service. If you imagine S3 as being something that has a hundred different things that you could possibly know about. You need to know about bucket naming structure, prefixes, uh, identity and access management policies, access control lists. Um, you need to know a little bit about life cycles. You need to know about encryption, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you imagine all of those different topics being a part of the body of knowledge about S3, every one of the different exams pulls a slightly different piece of this out. And so for me, I'm stuck with the problem where either I make you watch the same training on the same topic a bunch of different times, or I come up with a way to ensure that my training holistically covers the entire associate body level of information. And so that means that as you watch my Solutions Architect course, you're going to be exposed to most of the S3 content that you need. And when you watch the SysOps content, you're going to be exposed to some of that and a little bit of overlap as well. Keep in mind that I tend to reuse content specifically with this in mind so that you don't have to end up watching the same things again. We can already flag it and say, hey, by the way, you learned this already when you took the other course. And that means that you might have a lot shorter bit of information to go through and really foundationally uh, understanding all of the associate level content. Same thing goes with your uh, with the developer. So when we release the developer content, it will also have a different path that it takes through the S3 content, but a lot of it will overlap. And so in the end, friends, what this means is that you're getting a very powerful, potent learning experience. And if you start with any of these three associate courses and then move on to another one, guess what? You already are half the way there or even two thirds of the way there because of the way that I create the associate content itself. And so in the end, friends, as you begin looking at the associate level courses within the AWS uh, ecosystem, solutions architect, sysops and developer, you want to keep in mind that a large portion of that has to do with facing users, gathering information as an architect. SysOps is more the do, implement, and support, and developers are more about the integration and customization side of things. So use some of that deciding content to decide, uh, use some of that criteria to help you decide whether or not this SysOps course is the right one for you to start with. That being said, I do encourage you to move on to the other exams and watch the rest of the content here as well, because getting that holistic viewpoint, is going to make you a better developer, a better sysops engineer, or a better solutions architect all across the AWS ecosystem. So stick around friends. In the next couple of lessons, we're going to go ahead and get into looking at some of the sysops specific content that we've created, uh, and then exam prep materials, things to help you get the most out of this particular course. So stick with me friends, and I'll see you there.